please help me in welcoming Deacon Brian Zornick. Deacon was ordained yesterday along with 17 other men in our diocese. And so Bishop commended them and asked them to go forth and to come and serve the Lord in our diocese and in our parishes. So we thank God for the gift of all our clergy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I have forgiven you to eat. The man replied, the woman who you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offsprings and hers. He will strike at your, he at your head while you strike at his heel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Call. 
redemption and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore we speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen in transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling a tent should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came home with his disciples. Again, the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. 
When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, he is out of his mind. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Being in God's presence is holy ground. And we have to remember that we are always in God's presence. Therefore, we are always on holy ground. God dwells in you. A God who cannot be contained in his own creation lowers himself, humbles himself, makes himself tiny, and he dwells inside of you. You are the temple of God, and the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. You are holy because God has made you holy, and therefore you are a holy temple, and you are holy ground. The problem for us is we forget to submit to God. We forget to remember that God is always with us. If we recall if we remember that God is always with us, it changes the way that we respond. It will change the way we act. It will change our attitude, our responses. It will change our life. The problem is we forget to submit to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to remind us of the gift that has been given to us and poured in our hearts and those beautiful fruits of love, of patience, of joy, of patient endurance, of prayer, so that we can remember in times of temptation not to submit to our own will but to surrender to God's will by allowing the Spirit to move us in the proper and right direction, away from evil and to the good, to avoid offending God and one another, and to always seek to do the good first and to avoid evil always. Perhaps as we enter into this season of ordinary time, that is the school of the Holy Spirit. The Lord promised the Holy Spirit to send us the Spirit to teach us how to pray, 
the way Jesus prayed to the Father, and to teach us everything that Jesus commanded his disciples to teach so that we may learn more and more to be like Jesus, the Christian that you and I were baptized to be. Pope Benedict XVI said that we should pray in a particular time during this season, we should pray for God to give us the grace to be freed from the slavery of self-resistance and our own will, meaning to surrender like Jesus every moment, every conversation, every situation, every temptation, constantly, consistently, always surrendering to God every moment through his spirit, everything, including our self-reliance and our self-will. Today we see how our own will can be destructive. Adam and Eve are in God's presence, always in God's presence. The question, where are you, is not because you're so far from me, is for all of us to contemplate where are we in the relationship with God? Where are we in contemplating his presence? Have we mentally left holy ground because physically we're still in it, spiritually we're still in it? Jesus clearly says, I am with you always to the end of the age. Where are you is for us to stop before we speak, stop, stop thinking, stop trying to rely on yourself, stop trying to resolve it on yourself, stop being independent and surrender that moment to God. Look where you are. Where are you? Look around your life, your situation. Where are you? And listen for the voice of God. Listen to the Holy Spirit to bring you back to right mind. We're out of our minds when we think about doing an evil and thinking that it is a good. That is what evil has done. It's twisted goodness to the fact that we think something is good that we know it's evil. Adam and Eve didn't submit to God, didn't ask for God assistance. They relied on their own and evil twisted what they knew to be evil. God said, I forbid you to eat that fruit because you will die. You will bring darkness and death into this world. You will submit to evil rather than to submit to good. And we do that when we look at something that is evil and we say that it's good. We even say when we commit a sin to someone else or somebody commits a sin to someone, we might even say good for them. It's not good. It's bad. It's evil. We never give an evil for an evil. It's always a good for an evil. They never submit it. And you and I need to always submit. Jesus showed us during his temptations, he always submitted to the Father always turned to prayer, didn't rely on himself, but rather humbled himself before the Father. And then he was able to get through those temptations because anointed with the Spirit, he listened to the Spirit and remained in prayer with the Father. We see that also in the gospel. We see how evil twists what is good the Pharisees and scribes was supposed to bring the people closer to God. They were supposed to teach them how to pray and how twisted it is when we see good, the source of all good, goodness himself, and we say that it's evil. We think that good is evil, that is twisted. There are times that we think evil is good. No, good is always good and evil is always evil. It is the unforgivable sin 
to not submit to the Holy Spirit. All our resistance to good is a sin against the Holy Spirit. What is your resistance keeping you from doing good? What are the excuses that you have made to say lying is okay? Sometimes a lie is good. Where's the resistance inside of you that doesn't want to submit to change, to change your ways, to change your life, and to submit to God's holy will? This is the school of the Holy Spirit. We have entered into the season of ordinary time. This is where the Spirit teaches us how to pray, to submit ourselves, to confidently submit ourselves to the will of God and be more and more like Jesus, who does the good always and always avoids evil. Let us pray then as a family for that grace. Let us ask God for the grace this season to be freed from the slavery of our own self-resistance, our own sinfulness, and our own will. And let us also ask for the grace to freely submit to God like Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, our own will, and enter into the Father's will so that we truly say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, in heaven, and in me. In confidence, the Holy Spirit has given us the gift of faith, and now we confidently say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ has called us by his words and his saving deeds, so we confidently submit and place ourselves and our needs in his care. For the church, that her leaders and members seek unity in faith over division, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials, that forgiveness and empathy characterize their leadership with an awareness of service to the greater good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those newly ordained to the permanent diaconate, may they exemplify Christian simplicity, serving God's people with joy and a sharing spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our recent graduates, may they be blessed in their endeavors, seek ways to use their gifts to serve others and help build up the kingdom of God on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of the military and our local first responders, may they be kept safe as they serve their country and communities. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry and the homeless, for those in hospitals and nursing homes, for the homebound and all caregivers, and for those who suffer from illnesses or addictions not seen by the eye, may they know the healing and merciful presence of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us in death, that God grant them the fullness of redemption, especially Raymond Hametz. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the recently deceased, John Genta, Joseph Aiello, Anne McGrath, Harleen Devine, Sister Patricia O'Malley, Father Larry Olszewski, Vivian Hurston Bowden. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the prayers and intentions that we speak now in the silence of our hearts and for the people of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of yourself, for the gift of your Son, and for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Teach us how to pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good of all his holy church. 
Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks and exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, known and our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Son Joseph, her most faithful spouse, with all the blessed apostles and all the saints who have been pleasing to you throughout the ages, we too may marry to be coherent to eternal life, to be able to praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty oh Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, brother.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus! 
cross Christ, our brother, feed us now, give us life, lead us to one another. You are the bread of peace, you are the wine of joy, broken now for your people poured in endless love bread of life hope of the world jesus christ our brother feed us now Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to please be seated for a couple of announcements and once again, will you join me in welcoming for the first time as a deacon, Deacon Brian, to our midst. So. so as we are blessed to have our two other deacons, we have one more that is actually in the permanent diaconate formation already. We have one among us who's in discernment. And so if you're being called, if God is calling you, please speak to one of our deacons or one of our clergy so that we can assist you with that. Also for those, any vocation, a vocation to religious life, to, to being a priest or just even for marriage, those discerning marriage and our holy way of life, come speak to us. I just want to acknowledge, I, you know, within the last year, we've had a lot of um, the sacrament of holy matrimony. And I've seen a couple here. If you have been married in a year or less, can you stand up? I've seen a couple. Don't be afraid. Stand up. Yeah, I've seen some of you in here. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Awesome. So let us help you with those sacraments. Um, our ministries here are always made for us to draw you closer, all of us, including us, to draw closer to God. And one of the ways that God does that is by healing and reconciling us. And so one of our ministries is called Grace. It's grief recovery, and for us, it's a comforting encounter with Christ. And we've had amazing gatherings throughout as we brought that ministry back, 
It's a beautiful way to be in support, but also to ask the questions that might assist you through your grieving and sorrow process. And so our ministry is going to gather once again, June the 12th from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. We'll be in the St. Gabriel Life Center. We invite you, if you're going to join us, to please let us know, register. You can do that with Ann Stanko. That's actually in the bulletin. And please, if, you, if you're sorrowing, one of the things that Jesus invites us to do is not do things on our own, not to grieve by our own, but through him, and not to be sorrowing on our own, but through him. Allow Jesus to continue to help us, to restore us. So please come share that with us. Also, we have um, this uh, June the 14th. We're going to begin some summer hours as we enter into the summer months. We want to give our own parish team some time to be with their families as well this summer. So beginning June 14th, our parish office is going to close on Friday's afternoon. Um, so please, if you want you know, or, or need the parish office, Please, just during that month, we'll, we'll return to regular hours the first week of August, but just to give them some time with their family as well. And, and I know Deacon wants me. He's, I, I, I'm sure if I look behind, Deacon Pete is like, Father, please let me say this next announcement, right? I don't have a mic. I can. So please keep us in prayer this week as we begin Vacation Bible School. We got over 400 kids that are going to be on our campus every day. So keep them in prayer as they dive into it. It's scuba this year. Dive into a deeper friendship with God. And we're going to have a Dunk a Deacon Day on Thursday. But I think it should be Dunk a Whole Clergy Day, Father. I know it's your off day, but we'd love to have you over. So uh, let's just clear things up. Right. <laughs> what had happened was when Deacon was announcing this, he wanted to get 400 kids. And so one of the marketing tools that he used was Dunk a Deacon. And as we're getting closer to the day, you see how it becomes Dunk a Clergy now? <laughs> but rather than one Deacon, we now have three. Yeah, so let's go with <laughs> I can't wait. I'm going to be there. I'm definitely going to be there. And I'm going to be giving out bonus bucks. So, so. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Surely kin to me in Christ now meet both east and west in him meet south and north all Christly souls are one in him through our